Hey folks, Bob Warfield here. I'm going to go through how to do machine hourly rate calculations with our GWizard calculator today. Um, first, why would you want to have a machine hourly rate? It's just a really handy figure to have around to know how much you have to bill out your machine uh, uh, per hour in order to break even with that machine and the operator and all the different things that uh, go into paying to have the machine on your shop floor. Uh, you can use it for your quotations, you can use it to compare uh, different machines, it's a figure to look at if you're thinking about acquiring machine, uh, a new machine, it's just a really good number to have at your fingertips. And uh, our GWizard calculator software makes it super easy to calculate that number. So let's dive in and see how you do it. Okay, here's the GWizard calculator. and. Uh, you find the machine hourly rates over on the setup tab uh, under the machine profiles there's a different profile for uh, every machine you have in your shop so select the machine you're interested in uh, by default the hourly rate is set to uh, sixty dollars an hour uh, but we can calculate an hourly rate here with this calculator um, so uh, your machine hourly rate is going to be a function of a number of different factors the the cost to acquire the machine, the useful lifetime of the machine and what its value would be at the end of that life when you get rid of it, uh, cost of uh, consumables annually, uh, and the cost of the labor to run the machine. Uh, so you just run down here uh, top to bottom and it'll come up with a number for you. So let's let's go ahead and try an example. So let's say I wanted to look at buying oh I don't know a new VMC for my shop floor and the purchase price for the machine and the tooling I'm going to put down is ninety thousand uh, dollars. Now the machine hourly cost calculator is completely independent of what currency you're using. You just want to make sure you use the same currency uh, for all of your machines and for all of the different values in the calculator. You're not going to get good results. Uh, so I'm going to continue to talk in terms of dollars uh, but you'd use whatever currency uh, uh, is needed in your locale. Okay, so $90,000 for the machine and the tooling. Now, it's important to include the tooling that's machine specific in here. You know, whether you got to buy a whole bunch of tool holders for this machine or whatever it might be, uh, you want to make sure that cost is captured as part of your machine hourly rate. Uh, we typically don't include uh, cutters uh, either here or under consumables. Most shops will charge those directly to the job. Uh, but uh, uh, we want to include the tooling that's going to be around more long term. So tool holders, vices, fixture plates, uh, probes, things of that nature I put down here for tooling. Uh, if we choose to finance the machine rather than pay cash, we can click the little box and light up all this information. Let's say I'm going to put $10,000 down on this machine. I've got a loan term of four years and they're going to give me a 5% interest rate and we see from that it's going to be about eighty four hundred dollars worth of interest over the time of that loan uh... which is good to know now the lifetime of the machine you know, how many years am i going to have it on the shop floor before i'm going to want to get rid of it let's let's say ten years you know some shops just run it for however long they they have to depreciate the machine and then they get rid of get rid of it and get a new machine but let's say we're going to keep this machine going for for ten years uh... trade-in value at the end of the uh machine's life, let's say we can get $15,000 for it. Um, you can use sites like eBay to get some idea of what older uh, machines that would be similar to yours uh, sell for. So you know, use that to come up with a figure there. And on all of these figures that you're putting into the hourly rate calculator, be conservative. You want a number that's really solid that you know uh, if you charge that much or more you will make money with that machine. Your annual consumables cost, like we said, I don't want to include cutters or inserts in that, but uh, other kinds of tooling, you know, new tool holders, coolant, lubricants, uh, repairs, you know, if you're going to get the guy to come in with a ball bar test and calibrate the machine every year, uh, spare parts for the machine, all of these things add up and you need to put some sort of a dollar value there. I'm just going to put in 10% of the machine's uh, price. Uh, just as a starting point, 
And then the last category of cost for your machine uh, is the labor. Uh, and this may in fact be the most important cost over time. Um, so you've got an operator for the machine, they have some hourly rate. Uh, I'll just go ahead and put $15 an hour in here. Uh, the thing to keep in mind about the operator, if they're capable of operating more than one machine, and they often are, you want to split their hourly rate across those machines uh, in some way. If you think, you know, you could do it evenly, or if you think for, there's some reason to believe one machine is easier to run than the other, or something, and they won't, they won't spend as much time. You may, you may do a, a, a breakdown that isn't even 60/40 or 70/30 or something, but. But put what's left after that breakdown here as your hourly rate. Working hours a day, we're going to say our shop is open and working eight hours a day. Number of working days a year, I put 250 by default. And then there's downtime. I mean, the machine is not making parts for some customer all the time. There's downtime for maintenance uh, of various kinds. There's downtime just because, you know, maybe maybe business is slow for a time and you just don't have a job to to be working on that machine so I'm gonna go ahead and put in a third of the time as downtime okay given all those different figures we can now see the total cost of ownership uh, over the life of the machine is 300 about three hundred seventy four thousand uh, dollars the base hourly rate we want to get is twenty seven ninety four Again, I'm big on rounding all this stuff up and being conservative. So I'd say the cost to me to have that machine sitting on my floor, if I can keep it busy two thirds of the time, let's say it's roughly about thirty bucks. Yeah. You know, now let's say I want to do some markup on that. You know, let's say I want to add a forty percent margin to that. Okay, thirty-nine dollars and twelve cents. Looks to me like I need to to bill that machine out to my paying customers at about 40 bucks an hour if I want to make these kind of margins based on these kind of costs. So that's how you go about calculating your your uh, machine's hourly rate. Uh, you save that back in here and uh, it's kept with the different machines. Uh, if you save the machine profile here it'll be stored for you. Uh, I'm gonna save actually going through using it in a quotation estimation with our CAD CAM estimator module uh, which is accessed here. I'm going to save that for another video, but uh, the CAD CAM estimator will take what machine you choose and it'll grab its particular hourly rate. So you can have different hourly rates on all your different machines. Okay? So that's how you go about calculating your machine's hourly rate. It's very easy to do. It's a very handy uh, figure for you to have around. Give G-Wizard a try. We've got a 30-day free trial. If nothing else, use the trial to figure out the hourly rates on your machines, and, and then you'll have that available for you in the coming year. All right. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.